The university campus is really compact. Getting from north to south campus takes about five minutes, so there's no need to worry about being late to your lectures. Lectures create a really safe environment for you to engage with your lecturer and other students around you. There's many study spaces for you to choose from, especially at the Sydney Jones Library, which is pretty much open 24-7. The Guild is the heart of the campus. It's led by the students for the students. COVID-19 has changed how we're both taught and how we interact with each other. The university is trying to keep us safe by practicing social distancing measures, as well as having on-site staff and student testing. When I want to take a break from being inside, I find that the greenery really relaxes me, so sometimes I like to come outside to Abercrombie Square Park. Life on campus is such a community feel. Whether you go into your seminars or your lectures, you'll always bump into someone you know. Hello viewers and welcome to this session on student support at the University of Liverpool. My name is Jamie and I'm from the UK recruitment team here at the University of Liverpool. I'm joined by Dr Paul Redmond who's our Director of Student Experience and Enhancement. Hello Paul. Hi Jamie. Nice Thanks for joining you. us. Um, okay viewers, so some pre-submitted questions we have um, around student support uh, that I'm just going to put to Paul. So uh, first of all, um, what support is available to new students at the University of Liverpool? We offer a wide range of support. In fact, we really pride ourselves on the support we provide our new students. We think about it in three different ways. So we provide the support as soon as students come in. So this year, we've got a really thorough welcome program. Um, we recognize students feel differently about coming in on campus. So we'll have a range of uh, online and face-to-face -face activities, um, all available via the welcome app which students can download and it will show you a whole range of different things that we have available. Face-to-face, -face, online, in town, lots of different things. Um, so, so lots of support. And our teams, our wellbeing advisors will be available right from the start of term. Uh, and when students move into the term, when teaching starts, we'll have the usual support that we offer. Um, you know, it, uh, we'll have, we have academic advisors that will be available for students for their academic support. If students are facing challenges, we have a, a great counselling service, mental health support, um, lots of different help that, that is available for students throughout their time at the university. You know, we find students, have, most students go through university with, without many issues, but occasionally things, life gets difficult, so we're here to make sure that we can help students. And of course, you know, when, when thinking about what students are going to do when they graduate, uh, some universities leave that until the final year. We, we think that has to start in the first year. So our, our brilliant careers and employability team will be working with students, um, offering them help and support and advice right from the very start. So, so you know, it's, it's, it runs throughout the time that they're here, but there's lots of support available. Definitely. And uh, something you just mentioned there, Paul, is about um, preparing students for once they've left university, so their employability skills. So uh, what specifically... Um, is the university do to, to boost employability? We're, we're really interested and fascinated by this because we think COVID has actually turbocharged the, the, the world of work and it's created new opportunities, new, new, new industries, new sectors, which, which we, th we knew were going to come online, but not this quickly. So um, we think our students, we've got our challenge now is to prepare for students, students to work in jobs that don't yet exist. So what we're really focusing on this year is a couple of things. Um, We've got some great internships, great ex work experience opportunities in local firms. We want students to get involved with external organisations as part of their programme. So um, we've got a great internship programme where students can get paid employment in, with the local companies um, or, or certainly work with local companies as part of their degrees. We've got volunteering opportunities. We've got lots of part-time jobs. In fact, in the city region alone, we've got over 14,000 vacancies at the moment. So wow. there's lots of, lots of opportunities in this area for our students. Um, but, but we were working with students to help them think about gaining their experience. And then, of course, you know, we, we've got opportunities for students to set up their own businesses. So we've got some really exciting opportunities this year to, to help students develop the skills, contacts and ideas to go it alone and to run their own firms. So lots available for them. Very exciting, plenty of them to have a go of. And especially with students spending, on average, around a thousand hours they spend at university on average. 
So it's about making the most of that, isn't it, um, whilst at university. So we're here for you um, to support you in the best way possible. Um, so after, after the previous year, after everything that's been going on with the pandemic, um, some students coming into university might be feeling a little bit nervous about um, joining university. Um, so what would you say to those new students who are about to join this new academic year? I mean, it has been a tough year. It's been a tough year for everyone. But what I would say is, is students have demonstrated great resilience, uh, great optimism, and I think it will stand them in good stead for the future. So this isn't a lost generation or a disadvantaged generation. It's a generation that's, that's had a different experience than previous generations. But what I would say to students is think how the skills that you've gained from the last 18 months. Think what you've done, um, the insights you've gained from this experience and how you're going to use them from now on. So I think this generation, it, it, gosh, it has been tough but it's given them a, a great head start in thinking about the skills and resilience that they'll need for their career. So be, be optimistic, uh, keep that, that optimism and the hope, and uh, they're coming to the right place at the right time. Definitely, definitely. So stay resilient, stay optimistic, uh, viewers. You know, you've got a lot to look forward to. Um, and in terms of that, um, before coming to university, what would you advise students uh, should be doing before they come to university? I think it's, it's a good idea before you come to university to think about, um, think about that first week. Um, when students come to university, there's lots going on. You know, you're moving into a new, a new environment. Uh, if, if you're coming to stay on campus, if you're not, you're still coming into a new environment, mixing, meeting with lots and lots of people. Uh, it's exciting. It's, um, you know, it, it's a great opportunity. And I think sometimes it goes so quickly, students don't think about what they want to achieve in that first week. So have a read through um, the information that we send you, check out the Welcome app and try and plan your time. So it's got the ability to, so you can highlight areas that you want to focus on. Think about what you want to do, and what you want to achieve by the end of the week. So if there are clubs and societies that you want to join or find out about, make sure that you, you, you give yourself time to come and speak to them. It can fly by that first week. So a bit of planning, a bit of preparation, check out the app. Uh, look at our Canvas web module. We developed these new modules uh, that we want students to go through before they arrive. And they will tell you about how to be a good Liverpool citizen, um, how to stay healthy, how to how, or the skills you need, the information you need on campus. So check out the Canvas module as well. We'll be sending you information about it. Brilliant. Thanks, Paul. So there's, there's plenty to look forward to, students. We're here for you when you're at university, not just during your time here, but before you join us yeah. and after you've left us as well. So it's a whole support package from, from Liverpool. Well, Paul, thank you ever so much for joining me no, for offering that information. Um, viewers, I hope you found that useful, uh, that session useful. And thank you ever so much for dialing in to this student support session at the University of Liverpool. I remember stepping on campus for the first time and thinking how big and impressive all the buildings looked. I remember walking in the buildings thinking how amazing all the facilities were, things that I've never seen before, never seen in college or high school, and it really just took me away. Everything in Liverpool is just walking distance away. You've got the centre of Liverpool, just a 10 minute walk down the hill. You've got the bars, the restaurants, the docks, it's just all so close. So one of the reasons that I'd say to get involved in societies is the social aspect of it. There's loads of facilities here at uni, so whatever sport you're into, we've got you covered. It's really handy to make use of the career studio when thinking about what to do after uni in terms of finding a job. If you require any type of support, there's a really good wellbeing centre for you to also take advantage of. Hello viewers and welcome to this session on libraries and academic support at the University of Liverpool. My name's Jamie here at the uh, UK recruitment team and I'm joined by my lovely colleagues Amy and Chris. So hello guys. Hi. Hi. Thanks nice for coming. Yes, hi viewers. Um, so we've got some uh, pre-submitted questions and some stuff to talk about when it comes to libraries at the University of Liverpool and uh, academic support available for students whilst they're here um, at Liverpool. So first of all, um, at Liverpool, how many libraries do we have? And where are they located across campus? Yeah, so obviously the central university campus is in Liverpool City Centre and we have two main libraries here on campus. So they're sort of split by subject. So we have the Harold Cohen Library on our north campus, which houses the majority of the resources for our science, engineering, math subjects. So 
most of our students studying those subjects would tend to study there. Uh, and then we also have the Sydney Jones Library, which is located on our South Campus, which houses the resources for our humanities subjects. So that's anything from your modern foreign languages to psychology, anything like that, really. Um, but you can study wherever you want. And then we also do have a much smaller campus um, on the Wibble, which is our Leahurst campus, where our vets study. And we have a small library there as well. So usually the students that study veteran sciences can kind of access the resources there. Yeah, we have a great amount of staff who work there as well. I've been speaking with Patricia, who works at Lee Hurst recently, and she said they even have animals on farm, kind of canteen sites, and also, you know, a load of resources, but she's the one you go to for that. And we work over the Howell Cohen there, which is about a stone's throw from the VGM, just right behind us. Indeed, you. So actually, if you look behind us, you'll see the bigger uh, red brick building and the Harold Cohen Library is just to the side of that, so a very central location for our resources. That's so central, yeah. Definitely. So brilliant. So we've got two main ones, one on Lee Hurst, uh, and sometimes each um, department or each school might have their own little mini library as well, won't they, in the departmental buildings. So um, plenty of resources. So in terms of those resources, um, what, does, uh, what resources do the library provide? Well, we have about two million books physically, so you can walk through the stacks, um, especially in the Harold Cohen. There's rows of them, but then you go to the Sydney Jones and you've got the cool ones that you're able to spin out as well, <laughs> which are a great load of fun. But apart from that, um, we've got separate collections. Currently, we're working on a Liverpool Life collection, so that's within the city, books that are actually made from the city and different poetry and art from the city, so you can really get an engraved in the culture. Also, we've got uh, wellbeing resources, LGBT literature, and uh, we also try and coincide that with stuff like Black Lives Matter and Black History Month. So you'll always see collections that really pique your interest and really touch on the impetus of culture at the time. Yeah, we've also got, which is one of my favourite facts, our mm. um, science fiction collections. So the special collections and archives at the university are housed within the Sydney James Library and we've actually got the largest catalogue science fiction collection in Europe, um, which is amazing and our science fiction um, collections library of Phoenix is just so clued up on it all. He will always have some facts to tell you about it. So yeah, that's really cool as well. One I always roll out <laughs> exactly I'm, i was going to ask you about that actually yeah so it's such a cool fact there so any viewers out there who are interested in sci-fi and you know historical sci-fi as well you've got those collections to make use of as well um so that's really interesting and i think i remember one time that if you was it is it that if you spread out the collections of the library it stretches for how many miles or i can't remember one, two, three. I think it's from like here to Lee Hurst. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah so, so it's line up two million books and see how far that gets you. <laughs> so quite far. Yeah, so if you fancy a big walk, you can try doing that. Yeah. Um, brilliant. So plenty of resources. But that's not just physical resources, is it? There's like online resources. As you mentioned, Chris, there's special collections. Um, could you explain a little bit about the, the online resources and kind of like distance access resources? Yeah, definitely. So obviously we have a lot of students who will come into the libraries to use the physical resources and study in the study spaces that we offer there. But we also know that a lot of our students like to study either off campus or from their accommodation or from their uh, subject buildings. And we therefore provide a lot of resources that are available online. So we've got over 900,000 e-resources that you can access online. And that's everything from um, e-journals, e-books, um, we have huge databases of materials that you can use that might be specific to your subject. Um, we also have collections of films, of music, of audiobooks. So, yeah, we've got a lot out there and really a, a wide range of things depending on how you prefer to learn. So, you know, I personally like to sit and listen to an audiobook and I feel like I can do other things while I'm doing that. I'm not limited to sitting at a desk. So, yeah, we do have a really good kind of varied collection online as well. Yeah, I think something that the university understands, and especially the libraries adopted recently, is now we have to like kind of push this new digital and technological way of learning and something that students can definitely get involved with, especially if anyone is into science, mathematics or engineering and doing those courses. We have a lot of e-resources because a lot of them are online. Also, we try and get involved in a sense where we communicate with you guys through obviously social media, but also we have Spotify playlists for well-being, calming down, Obviously, sometimes when it all gets on top of your shoulders, a bit of music can really help. Definitely. So plenty of, of formats of resources for you to, to make use of. And those resources, um, are they all academic? Are they all, you can only take them out to study with? Or can you take some out just out of interest and to, to read for pleasure, really? Yeah, no, absolutely. So obviously the majority and kind of like the basis of our collections is for academic studies. But we also have a growing collection of sort of like leisure reading. Um, it's something that we've been developing more so kind of over the past few years and we have access to a platform called Overdrive 
which basically allows us to curate online collections of a huge range of kind of just leisure reading resources. So that, that might be anything from sort of like modern foreign language books or just kind of like general literature, whatever you're interested in really. Um, we're kind of building our collections and we always want to hear from students about what they want to read as well because, you know, we know that a huge part of your studies is kind of the enjoyment side and the leisure reading as well to take a break from your academic studies too. Definitely. But that's, that's good to know of yours. If you just fancy a, um, a read or some something uh, to use from the library, it's just for pleasure. That's absolutely fine and on offer at Liverpool. So that's great to know. Um, so in terms of um, the library, does it offer any kind of study support, such as support with writing essays or those kind of things? Yeah, um, we have actually its own separate entity for that called Know How. And Know How is basically designed to give you academic success. We know that um, we need to provide these opportunities because we're going from the university into the working world. So Know How has a calendar. If you go to the web page and on the calendar is a list of workshops. So that could be to do with referencing, could be to do with academic skills, maybe citation. The kind of stuff that you have to learn when you're in university that you were never doing at A-levels. Because I know as a student myself, and I know Amy will know, and everyone here, that referencing can be a bit of a pain. But once you actually get it down, it becomes really simplistic and we want to support that process as much as possible. Yeah, absolutely. So the team are really there to kind of support you with anything extra that you need outside of your specific subject studies. Um, and we also have dedicated liaison librarians in the library as well. So that will be a librarian who is dedicated support to supporting the students that are studying the subject that you're undertaking. And that means that if you're looking for a specific book or something to support your argument about X, Y or Z, they'll know where to look and they can kind of direct you to that sort of location. And it's more kind of tailored to exactly what you need rather than just kind of the general support that you might get otherwise. Yeah, each academic li uh, library librarian Library librarian. The <laughs> librarian that I've met, uh, lovely as the next. In all honesty, they have a reading list each for the subject so they can support you through. Um, if you go to the chat 24 hour 7 service, you'll be able to get in touch and then they will put a link to you where you can book an appointment or either email them. And you'll get to know them on a personal level just as much, but I'd say they are very busy, so don't harass them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's good to know that, that you've got that kind of personalised support and they're not just someone there to help you find a book in the big building there to kind of get the best out of you as well. And, and they are really passionate, aren't they, about students' well-being, yeah, students absolutely. succeeding. Massively, um, yeah. They'll just stop and have a chat with you wherever they can. Um, everyone walking through the lab, you will just have a chat anyway. You're yeah. kind of always walking around in little groups and to see the social side coming back, especially after the pandemic, it's mm. really nice to see. Definitely. Remember to talk quietly because it's a library. Um, <laughs> so, they're brilliant. So, great guys. Thank you very much for that. Um, so, uh, in terms of the library, the spaces, do they provide spaces for students to study within and to kind of use computers, for example? Yeah, definitely. So, I feel like the majority of people's kind of perceptions of a library is books, which obviously we do offer a lot of, but with such large collections online as well, um, it does mean that we do have spaces to study as well. So across campus, there are a variety of buildings that you can study in. You can study in the building where you're subject based, you can study in the guild, but in the libraries, as you just said, Jane, we have a lot of spaces that are, you know, for silent, for quiet study. So if you prefer to kind of just get your head down, get on with your work, not be disturbed, the library is definitely the place to go. We offer spaces that are just desk based, so you can bring your own laptop, bring your own work, or we also offer PCs that are networked to the, to the university network, so you just log on, all of your files, resources are saved to your drive, and you can just get on with your work for a bit. Yeah, and as everyone knows, we're all in it together, so if you really get, want to get in a group space as well, you can book them in advance, and they come with like HDMI screens, different kind of ports, mm -hmm. therefore, so you can gather around and, you know, the presentations that you do in uni, you can work on them as well. So plenty of choice, plenty of areas uh, for you to use students. Fantastic. Um, so is there actually anywhere to like, when you've been working, you might need a quick coffee, you might need a bite to eat. So is there anywhere uh, within our library spaces or study spaces where there is uh, somewhere to eat and drink? This is an important question. Probably the most <laughs> important question out of them all. But, like, I've been asking people since I've joined about like looking for this burrito. It's been evading me wherever it's been. But in the student guild just over there, they have burritos. And apparently they're amazing. I'm going to get one, so I'll see you there. <laughs> double block, double cheese, everything you need. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. In all definitely. honesty, there's loads of stuff on site, um, especially in University Square near the actual libraries itself. You have loads of kind of branded chain stores like Greg's Subway. Um, also, we offer kind of vending machines, Starbucks machines inside the actual library itself. And I think, what does the city have, Amy? Yeah, so in the Sydney Jones, where I was based as a student, there's the cafe, the Starbucks cafe in the entrance. And 
when I say a busy times of year, it is well used. I mean, it is well used because we're a twenty four seven library. So you can imagine if you're in there, at, you know, you know that you're going to be doing a late night stint. Then you want to stock up on your coffee beforehand. Oh, definitely, absolutely. And uh, you know, we're never stuck up in your coffee. We're very passionate about coffee here, um, so we do love to, to grab one of them. And obviously, Chris, very passionate about this burrito, and I can guarantee <laughs> you. Yeah, well, <laughs> as one who's enjoyed a burrito. It's worth it, US. So if you get a chance to come visit us, go for it. Um, brilliant. So loads of information there about our libraries, about our academic support. Um, does the library have their own um, website that um, viewers who might be interested in coming to Liverpool can go have a look? Yeah, yeah. If you, you, you can head straight to the library website from um, the main Liverpool University website. And from there, you can then access all of our collections, search what we have. Obviously, you won't necessarily be able to use them if you're not a student, but you can have a look. Um, you can also look at our know-how support service so to get an idea of the sorts of sessions that we offer and um, just to really get a feel of kind of what your academic support and library experience will be like as a student at the University of Liverpool. Definitely and uh, also some fantastic social media sites as well. Can you just remind us of your, what social media the libraries team have? Yeah so you can follow us on Twitter so it's Live Uni Library um, where majority of the time it'll be some sort of library joke or other. Um, <laughs> follow us on Instagram as well again Live Uni Library just to kind of keep up to date with everything that's going on with us uh, we share a lot of cool stuff about the library and across campus as well definitely it's really really interactive as well so there's always some kind of like Instagram story with a vote or something going on or a competition so very much check out those viewers um, fantastic well Amy and Chris thank you ever so much for joining us today thank um, and thank you viewers as well for downloading into this session on libraries and academic support at the University of Liverpool Here at Liverpool, we do things a little bit differently. We are the first peer-to-peer -peer, uh, career service in the UK and we work with career experts to ensure that every student gets exposed to the right skills and experiences to help them develop in their own careers. Our career studio offers a drop-in service, which makes it easier for you to access our help. But currently, we still offer that, but on Zoom um, due to the coronavirus pandemic and uh, the virtual studio is an experience similar to that of what we have on campus and you still get that one-to-one -one time with a career coach who'll be happy to help you and help you to explore connect and apply which are the three zones that we use here at careers to help with all aspects of your career journey like i mentioned we have three zones apply connect and explore in apply we help with the application process including cvs and interview preparation uh, connect is more about networking and expanding your connections so we will help develop your LinkedIn and connect you with other employers that we work with and explore is helping you to explore your options we don't want to tell you the answers we want to help you find them out for yourself and in that way we can help you to or explore different career paths or different uh, industries that you might be interested in Undoubtedly, the graduate market has definitely changed due to the pandemic, but there's also been a lot of improvements that have come with that. Now that uh, a majority of recruitment is virtual, that means you have more opportunities because you're not limited by things like travel. There is a more comp a competition, but that doesn't mean that roles still aren't out there. And we're happy to help you apply and search for those roles when you need to. Uh, as a careers team, we work with local, national and global recruiters to ensure that you are aware of the best opportunities that are available at the moment for students and graduates. We use employer-led uh, in curricular and extracurricular experiences, and we also have a lot of uh, showcases which shows what's on offer. We can help and these companies offer internships, placement and graduate opportunities, a wide range of things that you can apply for. And we want to help our students perfect their technique for recruitment. So often these uh, companies will come in and they will help run masterclasses and help with all key elements of recruitment. Every year there are thousands of undergraduate placements and internships available to students in all different sectors. You can access these usually on the internet via websites like Prospects, Handshake and Gradcracker or you can come into the career studio and we'll help you find these placements and apply for them including every stage of the recruitment whether that be CV, cover letter, testing or even interviews so we can help with all of that and help you find the internships too. 
Although it won't be at the top of your to-do list in the first year of your university, we do recommend that you start looking at your future career as soon as possible. That way you can start to think about what kind of experience you need throughout university, what you can get involved in, whether that be jobs, societies or internships, and what you can try and do throughout your time at university so that you can get the best graduate job you possibly can once you finish in third year. So it's always good to try and plan and try and be prepared and get all of that experience whilst you're at university. University is a great time to try and enhance your CV. Um, so there's loads of different things you can do to do this. So you can do virtual internships, you could do online courses, you can join societies, get loads of experience. You can even do part-time jobs. Um, you can get internships and placements. They're usually the really good ones that you want to get. Um, but if not, there's loads of other opportunities you can do, including part-time work, society work and volunteering as well. So there's loads of opportunities at university for you to get involved in loads of stuff and make your CV amazing by the time you leave. Part-time jobs are a huge part of university life and loads of students will have them throughout the time at university. Um, so there's loads of ways to get part-time jobs. Usually you can just search online job sites like Indeed and Monster and Read and you can find all the local jobs in the Liverpool city region, whether that be waitressing or shop work or admin, retail, anything like that. They'll all be listed online and we can help you apply for those and find them as well. The university do also offer part-time jobs for students, which are obviously great because they fit around all of your responsibilities with your course and other things like that. Um, so you can be a career coach like me, you can be a student assistant, you can be an open day helper, you can be a student ambassador. You can also work for the Guild of Students as well. So you can work as part of the Guild team itself, or you can work in the bars or the shops or the Starbucks. So there's loads of opportunities in and around campus that you can get involved in and they all fit around your course brilliantly. So definitely get involved if you can with the on-campus roles. For students that want to start their own business whilst they're at university, we have loads of support available for that as well. So we have a designated team in careers and employability, especially for enterprise and students starting their own business. We also run kind of designated programmes to help you start up your business, whether that be finances or logistics, anything like that, even up to like the design and things. We have guest speakers coming in who can give you some top tips. And we also have um, a student network that you can get involved in so you can also chat to peers and things like that about starting your own business. So there's loads of help available if that's what you want to do. So we also have more support available at the university, so not just career related. So we also have a designated student success team within the university. And these guys work on really important things for students, such as peer mentors. So we have a centralised peer mentor system who can help you with pretty much anything, whether that be pastoral or maybe just, you know, you need sort of help in hand around uni and things like that. And we also have a big welcome week. So that's like a big week of events where you can get involved, freshers week, things like that. Um, so the student success team deal with all of that and they put together all of these really exciting programmes and these really exciting kind of initiatives and peer mentor systems so that you can get the best time as possible out of your university experience.